All right, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to this week's episode of the Real Estate Weekly Success Lesson. Today, I'm going to talk about direct mail lists and how do you select the right lists for direct mail so you can ensure your campaign is going to be successful. So before I get into that, if you are not familiar with me, my name is Greg Helbeck. I've been a real estate investor for, shoot, almost eight years now. I've done a lot of transactions. I've been there, done that, experienced a lot in my real estate career. So the goal of these videos is to share what I've learned with you so you can listen, watch, and get value so you can apply it in your business, whether you're just getting started or if you're established already, I definitely can help both people. So we're going to talk today about direct mail lists. And the first video I made on this series about direct mail is all about, you know, kind of like high level direct mail you know, ex expectations and whatnot. And today I'm going to talk about lists, right? Because I, I have a real near and dear place in my heart with direct mail. It's been a big reason for my success as an investor and it's worked for super, super long. So anyhow, when it comes to direct mail lists, you really got to think about it two ways. You can either go after niche lists or broad lists, right? So either niche lists or broad lists. So a niche list is just a list of generally a smaller sample size that has a higher probability of being distressed or motivated. So what would that look like? Tax delinquent, which means they haven't paid their property taxes. Code violations, which means like there's overgrown grass or cars in the yard or something with the building department that they're fining them on because the house is distressed. Probate, pre-probate, inheritance, lien, just lien on the house would be distressed. Bankruptcy, divorce, the list goes on and on. Pre-foreclosure, vacant would be another one. The benefit to those lists is that you kind of know what you're mailing in the sense that like if you mail somebody on the tax delinquent list and they call you and they tell you they haven't paid their property taxes, like it makes sense because that's exactly why you mailed them, right? Because that's potentially somebody that can benefit from your service versus someone who's been paying their property taxes for 20 years, right? So that's something that is important. The benefit is that you're going to have a generally speaking a better quality lead. The drawback is that usually those lists aren't as big. So you're going to need, you know, a lot more time and a lot of more repetitions with those prospects in order to get some, some traction just because the list size isn't that big. On the other side, you have broad lists and a broad list is just basically criteria based uh, mailing, which would be like, you know, certain zip codes you like to mail in high equity, you know, like there's a lot of people with high equity across the country. So people who just have a lot of equity in their house. Another thing I love is length of ownership. You know, they've owned their property for 15 plus years. At that point, you'd assume it has high equity and maybe it has some, you know, reasonable signs of wear and tear. Another one that's been done very well for us is absentee owned, which just means that a property owner owns a piece of real estate, but they're getting mailed to a different piece of real estate. So usually that means that the mailing address is not the same as the property address. So it's either a rental or it's vacant or whatever the case is. Maybe their kids are living there for free. But absentee owners are another great broad list. Another one that I like is the unknown equity list, which is on list source, where basically it just means that the property has generally been owned for so long, list source doesn't know how much equity it has, i.e. it's free and clear and it's been owned forever, i.e. maybe there's some distress there. So we've done some pretty big deals from the unknown equity list as well. So let's talk how do you implement these lists. So if you have a very small budget, like I'm talking $2,000 or less, I would definitely gear more towards the niche lists because you're going to get a bit better bang for your buck in terms of, you know, the probability of somebody being motivated is going to be there with a niche list over a broad list. If you have a bigger budget, if you can spend three to five grand a month and you can do that for a while, I would then definitely mail the niche list, but also add in a component of the broad list because the niche list, you're not going to have too many records depending on where you are. So if you can kind of blend in some of the broad data, absentee data, unknown equity data, you know, that definitely is going to get you better at bat for sure. But if you don't have a big budget, I wouldn't start messing around with broad lists because you're going to get, you're going to spend a lot of money. And if you can't afford it, it's not going to be sustainable. So like the people who I would really advise going broad lists is if they have 10, 15 grand a month to start spending on mail, you're not going to hit all that with a niche list. You're going to have to go broad. You're going to have to play the numbers game. And just because someone's on a broad list doesn't mean they're not motivated, right? Like we've had some banger, banger, banger deals off like, you know, high equity, right? Because they, they have equity and they're also distressed, they're hoarder, whatever the case is. So that's really the two types of lists. And then another kind of like plug I would say is there's a website called greglikesdata.com, which is AKA PropStream. 
and you can pull some niche lists on there. That's a solid website to get, you know, decent data. I mean, the thing with PropStream full transparency is that it, you know, a lot of people have it, so it can be saturated. You have list source, which is another good broad list provider. You can go to listability. There's some higher end ones like, well, there's Leadvine. That's good for niche lists. Audantic, I've never worked with them, but I've heard good things about them. They're very expensive. There's Dataflick, D-A-T-A-F-L-I-K. That's another like predictive analytic list, which is more like kind of like modeling, data modeling. I've never bought it, but I've heard it's pretty good. So that, I mean, that, those are some vendors you can check out to get lists. Another honestly great way to get lists to be completely upfront is just going to the county and getting the tax delinquent list, you know, going and getting the probate list, going and getting, you know, scrubbing all this stuff manually using the county clerk. Like there's a lot of ways because all these data companies are going to get it from the same source for the most part, at least the niche list. So definitely it's worth investing into a vacant house list you can get on PropStream. You can also just go on to like list source and download a list and then flag it through like Envelo for all the vacants. You can also download lists on Envelo, which is a software company that I've been using for a while and I'm, I'm working with them. It's a great product, you know, very good friends with the owner. So, I mean, there's a lot of places to get data. You got to just understand at the end of the day with lists that do you have a limited budget? And if you do, I would go more niche. And if you have a pretty big budget, like I said, three to five K plus, I would then still do the niche list, but also put in some of the broad data as well. And you know, the next episode I'll do will be another direct mail episode. Hopefully you got some value from this. If you did definitely, you know, subscribe to the show and leave me a review on iTunes, post it on social media. And if you want to do a deal with me, if you're in Delaware or New York or California, San Diego, and you want to do a deal with me, whether you want to wholesale me a deal or you want to wholesale deal together, Email me greg at velocityhousebuyers.com or send me a message on Instagram at grego underscore 37 and I'll see you on the next REI Weekly Success Lesson.